my name is Lisa Keegan and this week is all about classic childhood memory recipes. So there's some really yummy recipes that we are doing and one of those is our melting moments or were they called yo-yo biscuits back in the day? Maybe I'm making that up, maybe that was just what we called them but I'm looking forward to showing you these melting moments today. Now I did go to recipe community and I actually imported a recipe into my cookie do. Now I've done nothing more than import it in uh, to show you. So I'm going to tell you some hints and tips along the way about importing recipes from cookie do into, sorry, from recipe community into cookie do 3.0 and what I do a little differently as I do this usually that I didn't do today. So I'm going to go start cooking and before I started today, I actually looked ahead and I could see that it had uh, icing sugar. So I've actually milled down icing sugar. So just raw sugar uh, into icing sugar, 10 seconds to 10. By the way, a lot of you who follow along regularly, you know, we normally don't do the dairy, gluten, wheat stuff. We are generally uh, gluten free, dairy free and um, mainly for the fact that I really try and pack nutrient dense food into my kids, into my growing boys. But you know what, there's a time and a place for everything, this week is it. So uh, melting moments and condensed milk bickies and scones and all those things that bring back those memories of our childhood, you know, when flour and I guess uh, butter and that were the staples and sugar. So let's get going with this recipe. And the other thing is, the other reason I've done this is because I've had a lot of requests uh, recently about how do I translate this old woman's weekly recipe or CWA recipe in my Thermomix. So that's part of it as well as I thought I will encapsulate all of that as we cover that this week. So first thing we do is soften our butter. Now you can see here straight away, where's the scales? How much butter? Now this is the thing, when you grab a recipe from recipe community uh, and pull it over, you actually need to edit it to allow it to bring it up on screen for you. And I'll show you another one. The condensed milk bickies will actually be one that you see where you, I've actually uh, edited it. I've actually typed it in correctly. So in the case where I've not put these in already, you can actually, it's okay, because you can actually come down to the little scales button at the bottom and you'll see that the measurements now come up. So as long as you can remember it's asking for butter, then obviously you can go and put your butter in. So I've got some butter here cubed up, it's straight out of the fridge, and I've just chopped it up, ready to go in, because we're gonna soften it first step, so that we can cream it up a little bit too much. There we go, perfect. So, butter was my first step. I can close that down, and then you can see it says, soften butter for two minutes on speed two. Now similarly, I don't have the actual step programmed, so to speak. Down the bottom though, I do have, I'll just move this camera, the little speed dialy thing here. So as long as I can go two minutes, 50 degrees speed two, I can now bring this up, go two minutes, 50 degrees speed two. I'll turn it in a second, I just don't want to talk over it. For me, not ideal. My memory span is about this big. So if I don't repeat it back multiple times, it'll drop out. Okay, I'm better off having a computer in front of me if this is the way I need to cook, which was my limitation back when I had a TM5. You had to have a device there or you, you were limited on your cookie do. These days you guys do have cookie do to bring over to a TM5, so you don't have so much of that issue. Uh, but this is why I love guided cooking. So I would normally have gone in before I put it to my machine and actually updated it with the steps in it. I didn't today because I want you guys to see the process and how you can still do it, it just looks a bit different. So I'm gonna put this on speed two and I'm gonna come back in two minutes and we're gonna continue this recipe. So up to speed two and I'll see you in two minutes. Okay, so the two minutes is up, it's singing at me to tell me it's up. It's softened in there, a little bit melted, by the way, you can see my bowl, I think I made mention, it had a bit of um, sugar left in it because I let I milled it down, 10 seconds speed, 10 and I didn't bother cleaning it out. So you can see it's softened, some of it's actually melted. Now we're going to the next step and it says to add sugar and vanilla and cream. So I need to bring up my scales again and I need to go, okay, how much vanilla? A half a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm on the scrapings of my vanilla at the moment. Homemade vanilla paste is the best. Have a look at places like Vanilla and Co or Honest to Goodness online and see if you can get some vanilla bean paste to make some. 
Um, and what did it say there? It says, I'm just going to tear that back, and icing sugar, 30 grams of icing sugar. So in that goes, see if I can not end up with the whole lot in there. Fill the scales up, I do. A little bit more. And then we're going to cream this. So the good old traditional cream. I don't know about you, but I remember at the bowl, you know, with the wooden spoon. And then eventually the wooden spoon became the hand egg beater. And then eventually that became the hand mixer, right? So the progression of our cooking in our kitchens. So now we're going to close that off. And it says to now 10 seconds on speed three. So I need to bring up this. I'm going 10 seconds. Speed three. So let's mix that. You can hear that it's going to come together, I hope. I'm actually having a moment where I'm looking at my computer to check that that's correct. It is correct. It's all right. I was like, well, that's not as fast as I anticipated it to be. All right. So now it says close the dialogue down. Click on next. Add flour. So that's combined slightly. Not hugely, but enough. It's a few chunks up the side. And we're going to add our flour and we're going to do it again. So scales come up. We need 125 grams of plain flour. Now I don't buy plain flour. I use um, baker's flour. So we buy in bulk. It's an unbleached baker's flour. Um, uh, organic as well from Honest to Goodness. So 125 grams of this. Tell you, it makes my heart race when I don't have a guided recipe. I'm having to double, triple check everything. Oh, 130. Close enough. Did it say it wanted corn flour yet? I'm just looking. I've got my laptop over here. It says flowers. It wants the other ones as well. Um, so tear that back and it wants 40 grams of corn flour. Now, sometimes melting moments may have um, custard powder. Just has a slightly different flavor and color to it. Totally okay either way. We don't buy custard powder because we can make custard from scratch ourselves. So there's no need. So this is the last ingredient. Phew, thank goodness for that. My heart will slow down a little bit. Um, I mean, it is doable and it's probably, it's not as stressful if you don't have a camera watching you do it. Uh, but there's certainly slightly easier ways, which I will cover in more detail later. So now we're going to bring up our speed and we're going speed three for 10 seconds again. So off that goes. And then we should be done. Now I reckon I'm going to need to scrape down the sides and redo the, the speed again, but let's have a look and see. This will be used, I'll talk in a moment. This will be used for icing later. I'm trying not to talk over the machine. It's not that loud, but it's just that, you know, another thing, another layer. Now you can see in there, it does need to scrape down. It's a bit powdery and flaky in there, so I'm just going to push that down. That butter up the side, there's probably about two tablespoons of butter stuck up the sides, and I want that incorporated. So, it is a biscuit mix, so we're going to roll it into, I guess, the equivalent of bliss balls, and we're going to push it down. All right, let's put it back on speed three again, and then we should be rolling it into balls in a second. So we're nearly done. Up to speed three. I'm going to keep an eye on it in the top. I might actually put it up a little higher. That feels better to me. That little bit faster speed. So there you go. There's a little tip. If I'm remaking this later on, it would be on speed three and a half. It just felt too slow on speed um, three. Okay. Look at that. That's what we want. Like a crumble mix. So now this is going to roll into balls and it says it's going to roll into it says eight portions. So that would be 16 balls because they've become a top and a bottom. So all we're doing is grabbing some mix, pressing it together, rolling it into a ball. Now I'd rather do bigger ones because it means I don't have to do so much rolling and stuff. Onto the tray, which I've got a tray here. I'll just put this back for you to see it. Good old rose gold tray, by the way. If you're looking at getting a TM6, uh, they're coming with a rose gold tray this month. It's a beautiful um, muffin tray and a pizza tray and a good and a simply delicious cookbook. So let me know if I can support you to get a TM6 on the bench. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on there. And if you're watching uh, these videos at a later point in time, this is uh, where are we? May, no, June 2022. So if you're wondering, oh, can I get that now? Now all we're doing is we're making balls preferably about the same size because you want to make a top and a bottom for them 
and then we're going to press them down with a fork. Then they're going into an oven, just checking for how long, 160 degree oven for 10 to 15 minutes until cooked. Obviously our ovens are all a little different. This one's a bit big, I'm just gonna pinch a bit off him. Um, and then they're going to be cooled and we'll come back later and we'll actually make the center icing, which is icing sugar and butter and vanilla. So super simple there as well. I won't bore you with rolling more little balls. I will show you how to press them with a fork before we finish up though. Where's my fork? It's as simple as giving um, the little prints on the top. That's it, simple as that. So do make sure you leave a little gap between them. They don't grow too much, but you also don't want them melting into each other. So I'll be back once these are out of the oven to show you how to make the icing and I'll wait for them to cool and then we'll come back, we'll make the icing and assemble them. So I look forward to showing you how to finish off these beautiful melting moments. Let me know when you make them, share the pictures with me. I would love to see how you make these in your kitchen. So see you soon for the next step of this recipe. Bye for now. Okay, welcome back. They are out of the oven, they are cool, and I'm gonna make the icing now. Now, you can see the step we're up to. Uh, it says add all icing ingredients to the bowl. Butter, icing, sugar, vanilla. Now, I'm gonna make a half batch of the icing because really, I've only got, what did I end up with? Uh, 12. So I'm only gonna make six biscuits. I really only need six portions of icing. So I realized that they're, they're seems really generous, their sizing. So I'm going to not use that much. So I'm gonna bring up my scales, I'm gonna look down the bottom, which could be really confusing if you're not careful, and I'm gonna put in half of this. I'm gonna put in 50 grams of butter. So up my scales are there, excellent. Up with those. Nelly there. And then I'm gonna put in 75 grams of icing sugar. Remember to tear those scales back when you're not using. There we go, not using guided recipes. Here goes the icing sugar pre-milled earlier today. Oh, pretty close. And then it says vanilla. I'm actually going to do a little bit different. I've got a natural strawberry flavoring just for something a little different. So, and you saw me use the end of my vanilla earlier today as well. So we're gonna go with something different. This is actually something I typically use to um, flavor ice cream when we make homemade ice cream and we actually make ice cream ice cream. So not the fruity dream version, but like with condensed milk or cream or with eggs and milk and that sort of stuff. So let's mix this up. Then it says 10 to 20 seconds on speed four. So on with our lid and I guess in essence we are creaming it. So speed four, I'm not gonna put the timer on. I'll just keep an eye on it and listen. We want it to come together. moment it looks like breadcrumbs and I can hear and see the difference now you can hear it's come together and I reckon that's it so let me show you the final product let's see if it, I might need to scrape down the side so let's have a look so there is the icing in the bottom ready to go on the beautiful biscuit. And yes, I could scrape down the sides and do that again. However, looking around, I don't think I bought a spatula in. So we'll go without that. So then if we finish up this recipe, it says to, when the biscuits are cool, cool, then pipe the icing into the middle. Now I'm going to just grab some of this beautiful, and it's like butter. If you, like it's a buttercream, right? And we're just gonna spread this into the middle. And then, no piping here. We don't do that fancy. And then, now you could put jam and those sorts of things if you want, but that there is your melting moment. Made in your Thermomix. Pretty simple, basic ingredients. I reckon you'd have them in your pantry. Find a, a top and a bottom, and there you go. Look at that. Homemade melting moments in, not long, in your Thermomix. Using a recipe community recipe that I've brought over to Cookie Do, Yes, it needs editing and doing some tweaks. I will uh, share a video at some stage showing you how to tweak it and edit it. But you know what? If you need to make these, there's the way to do so. Cook along to these videos, get more confident with the Thermomix and uh, transform your kitchen because that's what a Thermomix does. It gives you more freedom in your kitchen. So I'm going to finish the rest of these now. I'll take a photo of the final product. Can't wait to see you give these a go. Give them a go. Let me know what you think. And um, 
If you've got questions, you need support along the way, I'm only ever an email, a text message away. So please don't ever hesitate to reach out. Uh, thanks for joining me today. My name's Lexi Keegan, and I hope you've enjoyed these melting moments. Can't wait to see you give these a go in your Thermomix. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.